How many of you feel that you've released judgment from your pro emotional processing work? Another? Would you like to comment about how you feel you've done that? Anyone? Just thanks. Just, just going to have to hold it close. Just by the recognition that it's a judgment has hurt me. It's like, oh, I'm judging myself. Great. All right. So every time you've noticed yourself judging yourself, you've actually told yourself that you're judging. Yeah. You're, you're, you're yeah, recognizing. Well, I've, I've just recognised that I'm doing it. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So you're observing your own judgment of yourself. Yeah. Okay. And. Right up the back, yeah. You have to hold it quite close. I'm telling you, I'm um, being aware of the child at, at the point at which, or just a general awareness of at the time when I took on that judgment or the hardness in my life, and being aware of that moving the child, so I'm standing inside myself and observing it, and then thinking the whole thing, you need to do that for a good reason. Yeah. So compassion comes into it. Understanding why I need to make that choice. Good. So, so basically, it's having compassion for the fact that the child got all that judgment yeah. in the first place. Yeah. yeah. I need to make certain decisions to myself. Why do I need to do that? Good. To save myself from something that could be worse. And so, that understands why. Yeah. Good. Anyone else? I, uh, I had a pretty big um, issue come up for me um, where I got about some truth about some actions that were really not very nice and um, and I felt that I needed to feel some remorse. Can I get rid of Why can't I feel this? And um, I looked through some of the notes that I've written that you have um, given us. And uh, you did mention this thing about judgment. I'm like, okay, I'm going to look at the judgment that I have about feeling remorse about my actions. Yeah. And apart from it being very emotional, when I just started writing up lots of things that seemed to be blocking me, sealing that feeling, yeah. um, it all came tumbling out. And I did and then have the judgment, oh my God, look at all this crap. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it, it really helped me look at, at what was holding me back. And there were a lot of other issues that I really um, needed to go into as well. And I didn't know it there. Yeah. So my judgment, looking into the judgment, illuminated a lot of other things with me. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And allowed me to go into that feeling. Yeah. So you could say, in summary of that, that you had to basically examine yourself very carefully and see what was going on. But you could also see that you had obviously you'd done you'd done something that you felt was wrong. Then you felt you should have been sorry, but you didn't feel sorry, and so then you judged yourself about that, and that was the whole sequence of events for you. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. 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 Anyone else would like to? Um, I think I've, I've uh, my wife made me set no idea. Depression, yep. and done a lot of work with her on um, judgmental behaviour. Yep. Um, but uh, not having judgment on myself sort of stopped me feeling frustration and not being able to achieve something. Um, but I treat it like I would treat my nine-year-old son. You know, he's just learning his times tables. I'm not going to expect him to do calculus. So uh, you know, I'm still on a journey. Yeah, with many things yet to learn. So if I start judging myself now, expecting myself to do things that are high so that's sort of yeah. my own trick. So basically it's uh, relaxing with the learning process rather yeah. rather than expecting yourself to be perfect. Yeah. yeah. How many of you expect yourself to be perfect before you begin? <laughs> Common emotion. <laughs> yeah. So what happens during this phase here, which is the soul really starting to sink phase? is we, we, in this phase here, we get presented with a lot of truth, right? Some of that truth is universal truth. Other parts of that truth is personal truth. Now, universal truth is generally quite easy to accept. Why is that? It's 
because we don't have any emotional investment in it. Does that, that make sense, doesn't it? But personal truth, that's very difficult to accept. And the main reason why that is, is because we're so used to judgment. We're so used to judging everything that we hear about ourselves. And usually what do we do when we hear something bad about myself and somebody said it? We normally go into, oh, you know, I'm a nasty person. How dare they ever said that about me? I'm a black man then from my list of friends. And, you know, we just go down this road, don't we, of trying to actually remove that person, in fact, usually from our life in order to just avoid that projection or that truth, if you like. And so this is the main problem we're facing, is that we're actually judging, when we judge, we're actually judging the truth. Can you see that? And if you keep judging your tr the truth, you are not going to feel emotions. The reason why is, to actually feel any emotion, we must first feel the truth. Now, does everyone understand what I just said? Because it's so important to understand. You must feel the truth before you will actually feel the emotion. You must actually believe a, and actually state and feel this truth before the emotion will flow. Example. And I'll give you a very physical example. You're standing in front of the mirror in the morning. And there's a bit of sleep, you know, in the corner of your eye and, you know, running down here from the night, from the night. And maybe there was a bit of a drinking night the night before and you're looking pretty worse for wear and hair's a bit of a mess and, and everything like that is happening. There's your picture right in front of you. What do you normally do with that picture? Oh, this is looking pretty bad. Some patch-ups have to occur, right? If you're a woman, you slap, slap on the mask, maybe. If you're a guy, then you shower and maybe you shave and, you know, some of those anti-after-effect uh, type, um, what do you call them, concoctions that you might drink. And just in order to pep you up. Now, why do you do all of that? You do it all because you want to look better, even to yourself, don't you? And this is a common thing that we have inside of ourselves going on, is that we always want to present to ourselves a better picture than what we really are. Now, can you see a problem with that on the divine path? Yeah? Can you see that from God's perspective, what is God seeing? The absolute truth. Exactly as you are. What they say, warts and all? You're seeing everything. Is that's what God's seeing? If we were going to become a one with God, what will we finish up saying? Everything, warts and all. Not only in ourselves, but in everyone around us too. Right? We will eventually start seeing what God sees. Now, if I have some judgment about that, that's going to really affect, isn't it, my own progression so much? But also, it's going to affect my projections of emotions onto other people as well. Now, if I accept the truth emotionally inside of myself and I have an open heart and all I'm doing is focusing every single day on seeing the reflection in the mirror that I'm getting reflected back at me through the law of attraction. So remember the law of attraction is like a mirror. It's reflecting at you constantly what you've got left inside of you and also the good things inside of you too, of course, isn't it? It's reflecting both at you constantly. Now the good things we're totally happy about taking responsibility for, aren't we? Like how many of you, you know, if somebody, if you had a hundred people saying, oh, she's a lovely woman, you know, you'd be pretty happy with that. <laughs> but if you had a hundred people saying, well, you know, she's a real bitch actually, <laughs> you know, I don't really like spending any time, like, that would be pretty challenging, wouldn't it? So, when we look at the mirror, the key is firstly, we, go, we need to see our truth. We need to look at our truth sincerely. Once we see that, the key is to not walk away and forget it. 
and you will be very tempted to walk away and forget it because you'll do this when you see the, yourself in the mirror. You'll do this judgment thing. Every time you judge, you are resisting the truth. Every time you resist the truth, the emotion that the truth will open up will not flow. The emotion will only flow when you accept the truth. Now that applies whether I have harmed someone else or someone else has harmed me. Now most of us are totally comfortable, are we not, in dealing with the emotions where we have, where other people have harmed us. You find those pretty easy to deal with? You know, when I was three, mum did this and dad did that and it was terrible and you know, I'm pretty happy to cry about that. When I say happy, I don't know if you use the right term, that was the right term, but you can cry about those kind of issues quite easily, can't we? But what about when you have harmed others? Or when others come to you and tell you that you've harmed them? How do you react then? With even more judgment. With even more judgment? Or often with the opposite? Denial. Denial and blame. Justification. Justification. One of those two. 